Hello, my name is Rainer Marks. I'm a director of business development, and uh, I am very excited to come to you today to talk about the world of Viking cruises uh, in conjunction with Morse Murdoch, Columbus Travel. Morse Murdoch and Columbus are the largest sellers of Viking cruises in the state of Utah. And uh, I would like to take you on a little presentation today to explain to you what it is that makes Vikings so popular uh, among travelers in the United States and Canada. These are really the only people you're going to see on a Viking river ocean cruise. We are 100% English speaking cruise. The majority of our guests are coming from the United States and from Canada. There will be a couple of travelers from the UK and from Australia, but uh, 90% will be from United States and Canada. So with that being said, why taking a river cruise to begin with? Because river cruising is really what Viking is known for doing. There's so much more that we do, and I hope this comes through today's in today's presentation. But we're going to start with river cruising. So what makes it so popular and why should we start river cruising if we haven't done so yet? Now, first of all, it is important to see that um, you're going to see the world's greatest cities along the way because historically they have grown along the rivers and um, have, uh, you know, been located strategically and economically important uh, near, near major rivers. Look at the Rhine, the Seine, the Danube, right? These are large rivers and uh, the rivers have been the main means of transportation to uh, people back in the Middle Ages and before. So historically, the river goes through the heart of town. That, again, is an absolutely uh, remarkable uh, point to talk about that when you are coming to the city and when you're docked uh, in the city, you're always in the heart of the city, already in the heart of town. And most of your excursions, by the way, your shore excursion, your daily shore excursion is always included with a Viking cruise will take place as a walking tour, right? Many of them are walking tours and they start right next to your ship with your local guide, with your local English speaking guide uh, who will take you in his hometown. So I'm talking about their actual hometown with a lot of passion and knowledge for uh, that's, uh, you know, about their, about their city. Now, you can rest assured that after boarding and settling in in your beautiful stateroom, you have, first of all, a lot of choices um, of different uh, staterooms and different layouts, right? It's all about choices we have from our entry-level staterooms on the ships all the way up to the spacious and very, very beautiful uh, explorer suites on our river ships, uh, everything in between please make sure to talk to your travel advisor to pick the right cabin that is right for you. And these staterooms really include all the comforts such as plush down comforters and, and absolutely amazing bath amenities like uh, premium Leoxitan products <clears throat> and so much more that we're going to talk here about. And uh, when you are joining uh, an ocean cruise or a river cruise on our river cruises, uh, you wake up, of course, in a different city every single day. Now, there will be barely any days at sea. Most of the time, you see every day a new city, uh, sometimes even more than one. <clears throat> you have several stops along the way, beautiful, ever-changing scenery, such as small towns, large metropolitan cities, castles, vineyards, uh, small towns, ever-changing sceneries. They're never far away. So it's a good idea to have your camera always in reach and have it nearby, right? Now here you already see, for example, we are in Paris. And um, uh, amazingly, uh, you have in these ancient cities, these metropolitan cities all over the world, you have these UNESCO World Heritage Sites, large cathedrals or buildings that are some, in some way uh, of, of historic significance. And uh, rest assured that we will visit these historic sites. These are normally part of our included daily shore excursion. What's also really wonderful, and I touched on that initially, that you will not hear any other language on board than English. So all your fellow travelers are English speaking, the publications on board are English, the TV programming, the movies, the entertainment, and all of that will be in English as well. It's open seating, very casual. Here you 
have a beautiful view of the Aquavit Terrace that has a glass enclosure. So <clears throat> this is really one of the best spots on the ship to enjoy the gorgeous views. There's no reservations needed anywhere on the ship for all of the multiple dining venues that we're offering on our river and ocean ships for that matter. But we're focusing in this first part of the presentation on our river ships, right? Now, it is a very inclusive, uh, inclusive uh, experience. And what does that mean, right? From the daily shore excursion with your local guide that speaks English um, and to, uh, you know, all the amazing sites that you are visiting along the way, uh, your beverages throughout the meals are included as well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it is also good to know that unlike larger cruise lines or ships, there's no huge stage productions that we're offering. It is a smaller entertainment, his, uh, folkloric entertainment that we're offering. These are performers that you are able to see up close. Uh, it could be Bavarian dancers or Dutch dancers, or it could be tenors, singers. They kind of bring the culture of the city, of the region that you're traveling through, bringing that close to you in your beautiful uh, Explorers Lounge, but that's actually the main uh, venue for entertainment on board. And uh, we're also viewing entertainment as an enrichment of your overall experience. So you might see a historian talking about his hometown as we're sailing down the Rhine River. We might be hearing a lecture on the significance of certain castles or bridges in World War II and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Good to know also that uh, you're able to travel at your own pace, right? Whether you wanna travel like a local or you would like to take it a little slower, only see the highlights of the town. Maybe you want like, uh, maybe you would like to rent a bike and be a little bit more active or do a canoe tour, a kayak tour in the Danube marshes and in other parts of the European rivers, you can do so. You travel at your own pace, at your own strength level, at your own comfort zone. And uh, there is no must, but everything can. That's really one of the uh, main approaches to river cruising, that you have all the freedom that you need and that you want uh, to go ashore and at the pace that you'd like to. Now here, we're looking at some of the most popular sailings that Viking has to offer throughout the last two decades, right? We've been in business for over 20 years. And these sailings pretty much from early, from the early beginnings, are some of the most popular, the Rhine getaway, right? When you see those ships in our commercials coming down that Rhine River and the castles left and right, that's the, the Rhine River, the Rhine getaway between Amsterdam and Basel and vice versa. Or the romantic Danube, the Danube Waltz, also two eight-day itineraries on the Danube, um, really beautiful with a large metropolitan cities such as Vienna and Budapest. So the program changes a little bit along the way between those two, uh, but it uh, might be a good idea to talk to your travel advisor to get a little feedback and input uh, based on what your interests are, right? Or you would like to combine Rhein and Danube in one 15-day journey, the unforgettable Grand European Tour is absolutely stunning journey. Uh, again, 15 days, Rhein, Danube, and the Main River, a beautiful scenic a uh, slow flowing river that connects both rivers. And then by means of the canal, you're turning into the Danube River. Waterways of the Tsars, this is really where Viking story began in the late 1990s in Russia. Uh, an absolutely remarkable tour. If you never thought about it, uh, about Russia as a destination, maybe talk to a travel advisor and uh, look it up. It's really absolutely fantastic. The Russian people are uh, very welcoming, and uh, the culture is nothing short of amazing. Paris and the heart of Normandy, chateaus, rivers, and wine are two examples for fantastic eight-day sailings in France, and then Portugal's River of Gold. Of course, you can uh, sail on the Douro River as well, learn about the culture here between Spain and Portugal. Again, a beautiful journey. It's kind of a land tour slash river cruise. Now, <clears throat> the hard part, and I hope you get... Uh, you get the idea of talking to your trusted travel advisor, which European river is right for you, because we all have different ideas and we travel at different pace with different interests, right? And uh, uh, that, to talk about that, I would definitely get some feedback from your travel professional, whether it's the Rhine getaway, the Grand European, or a Danube uh, cruise, right, that has so much in store for you. These are 
wonderful journeys and especially for first time cruisers if you've never taken a river cruise with viking this might be a great starting point for you any of those uh, wine lovers will certainly have a great way of looking into one of one of these uh, itineraries from portugal france of course right you have the home country homelands of the wine making cheese making uh, different culinary experiences or maybe you travel um, with an interest for history. And here, Paris in the heart of Normandy is a fantastic journey that takes you to the beaches of Normandy. Uh, we'll learn about uh, the ancient history of Paris, the art colonies at Giverny, uh, or the Maid, uh, the, the maid of Orléans, right? <clears throat> but also uh, the occurrences on D-Day, right? We're visiting the American cemetery, the D-Day cemetery and the museum and the beaches, of course, a very somber day. More history on Grand European Tour, where every village, every uh, bend of the river offers a new angle on ancient history, on more recent history. Or why not peek behind the Iron Curtain uh, when traveling the passage to Eastern Europe uh, with a unique perspective? Maybe you are interested in Dracula's Castle, at Bucharest, Budapest, all of these amazing towns that, you know, more recently became accessible to us here in the West. The Danube River, again, so much to offer. My favorite journey uh, between Budapest and Regensburg, my hometown. Now, you, if you have a, a passion for classical music, Mozart, Strauss, you love the Viennese schnitzel, you love the waltz, this is an amazing journey. You enjoy history in Budapest, maybe uh, some Jewish history that you want to learn about. This is an absolutely stunning river to learn about all of these things, right? The Rhine River, again, um, a very, very active river. You have four countries that you're visiting during eight days, multiple ports in some of the days here on the river between France, Switzerland, between Germany and the Netherlands, a culinary journey, a journey into the history of the castles along the Rhine River. Absolutely stunning journey that I highly recommend. Or maybe a little slower pace on the Main River, not less interesting. You have Nuremberg, you have Würzburg, right? The beautiful medieval city of Bamberg along the way and so many absolutely gorgeous highlights here. So again, your travel advisor will be able to point you in the right direction, give them as much information you, you want to do, so you must do, so, and that will be really the base for your travel advisor to advise you correctly on what your first Second, third, fifth journey on Viking should be. A recently opening of Eastern Germany to the West allows us to travel the Elbe River. And here on the Elbe, this is a little off the beaten path, to be honest. It's a, it's a beautiful area, right? With stunning sceneries, ancient villages, cities, the beautiful city of Dresden, with, which is a, a, a historical gem, right? Uh, so much to learn, so much to see connects also. Uh, connects us also into the gorgeous city of Prague along the way with extensions in Berlin and Prague. Now, France, what hasn't been said about France, if you have a passion for the culinary world, if you have a passion for the finer things in life, uh, a France journey is, is absolutely a must, right? So lots of history, lots of culinary explore, explore, exploration, um, lots of history from the Vikings to recent history, uh, art, music, culture, literature, all of that is a great angle for you to look into a France itinerary. And then of course, the beautiful, absolutely gorgeous landscape of Iberia on the Douro River, where we are sailing the Douro for most of the part through Portugal and then connect for one day into Salamanca in Spain, right? <clears throat> so many wonderful things to see from tiny villages to large metropolitan cities such as Porto and Lisbon along the way, history of the menu line and, uh, you know, medieval travel history is absolutely fantastic. Now, a little word about the um, actual vessels, right? Our beautiful long ships. Now, these are the ships, they're streamlined ships. If you have traveled on one of those, you know what to expect on Viking because we really built these vessels uh, for our European fleet. 190 passengers, if sailing at full capacity, the length of the ship, 443 feet, on four decks, um, but 95 uh, staterooms are available here, currently not being sold for at 100% capacity, but uh, these are just some specs for those more interested in the actual specs of the ship. Now, 
The feel on the ship, I would, rec I would maybe describe it as serene Scandinavian spaces. So what does that mean? This elegant ships, these are beautiful light filled uh, spaces that, that offer comfort, serenity, that are absolutely beautiful. They offer a lot of art, literature, and history on the ship. There's a library on board with travel literature that kind of relates to the destination, to the area that we're sailing through. Um, lots of areas where you can unwind and sit back and relax, maybe use the free Wi-Fi to stay in touch with folks at home. Absolutely elegant ships all throughout. And again, there's a light filled ships with sealing the floor windows all throughout the ship, even here in our bar and lounge area, which is one of the areas where folks unwind throughout the day, have a cup of tea, glass of coffee, a glass of wine, or unwind and relax. Beautiful views. Again, everywhere on the ship, you have a gorgeous view by means of sealing the floor windows all throughout. The Aqua Terrace is a, uh, a fresco dining area in the front of the ship, finds a lot of use throughout the warmer months of the year, obviously. But this is one of my favorite spots because you're, this is really the best way to travel on Viking uh, river ships. You're up front in the ship, sailing into the sunset, into the sunrise if you're an early bird, right? Having your first uh, cup of something in the morning while you're enjoying the gorgeous view. This is the best way to sail to travel to experience Europe or wherever you're going. State rooms itself, I mentioned initially that we have a lot of choices for you, whether you want to go into the high-end explorer suites or you say to yourself, hey, I'm only a couple of hours at night in my cabin. I don't need all this lush and plush space. Uh, I'm, I'm actually want to go a little more, little more basic. Then maybe the standard state room is just fine for you. So again, this is advice that I would talk to my travel advisor and get their feedback on these beautiful cabins. They do offer um, absolutely amazing uh, attention to detail from the beds to the bath, to the heated bathroom floors. They have, they offer a lot of storage solutions, pretty much everything you need, right? They're perfect retreats for you to relax and begin your they refresh these mattresses that we offer are absolutely amazing. I can vouch for that. So you awake refreshed and relaxed in the morning. Premium amenities from flat panel TVs. These are multimedia uh, TVs where you can, you know, obviously watch the news of the day uh, to streamline movies into your cabin. 110, 220 volts. So you don't need any um, adapters for that. You have hair dryer and Wi-Fi is included and all of these wonderful things, complimentary movies and room service as well. <clears throat> so when uh, you are uh, looking at the Viking uh, fleet of vessels, we're not only looking at river ships, right? Here you see them side by side and you see the size of our ocean ships, which looks enormously big next to one of our river ships, but they're actually not that big. They're 930 passengers only, categorized still as small ocean ships. And in, you know, in size, you see it right here. These ships go around the world. They go every corner of the world. There are nine vessels currently available for you to choose from in every part of the world. Now, here is one of our beautiful vessels, the gorgeous Viking Star, our first one. Uh, here in the uh, fjords of Norway. Let me tell you a little bit about our ocean vessels. These again, Scandinavian spaces, very similar in design as the river ships are elegant, gorgeously, beautifully designed. And again, uh, all of the interior design, kind of an homage to our heritage. You will find scenes in the decor from all of the ports that we're going to, maritime designs in the carpets, in, in all of the decorations on board. And a lot of the uh, the course on board remind you of our Viking heritage, a matter of fact. So a couple of things that I would like to bring up to you that makes you a little bit, that makes you understand who we are not, because we do not have casinos on board. Our approach has always been that our travelers will spend their day ashore and learn about the culture, the art of the destination. So with 12 hours on average in port, there's not really much time left to sit in a in a smoky casino by the way smoky we do not allow smoking on board at all right no children under 18 that means no little kids we love them all we love our kids we love our grandkids but this is a grown-up 
uh, product, a grown-up experience on rivers and oceans. You have to be older than 18 to get on Viking. No, uh, no umbrella drinks, no photo photography sales. This is just not something that we do. It is a sophisticated approach. We don't do art auctions on board. By the way, there will not be any selling going on on any of our Viking ships. So if you do have a question, please visit the shops by all means. Um, but nobody will approach you to sell you anything, not in the shops, not in the spa, nowhere, right? Um, no waiting in lines. That's another great thing because we ask that you make your dining reservations ahead of time. The wonderful thing here is we do not charge any of the, for any of the dining on board, not in our specialty restaurants, not in the restaurant. Uh, room service is included as well. So no nickel and diming all along the way. You can even do laundry on board, absolutely free. And some of the views on the ship are absolutely stunning here in the Explorer's Lounge. Gorgeous lookouts into the destination. And especially as we're sailing some of these coastlines, this is maybe one of the best spots on the ship. If you're not if you're not, if you don't want to go outside, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous area. So keep in mind the Explorers Lounge. And I mentioned the best dining choices at sea you find on Viking. And the most beautiful thing is you do not have to pay extra to dine here. They are all included. Uh, we even offer private dining in Manfredi's and the Chef's Table restaurant. So what you want to do if you have a small party and you want to go into private dining, talk to our maitre d' on board. You can't unfortunately book it ahead of time, but talk to our maitre d' on board and we'll get you in. And again, at no extra cost. 24-hour uh, room service, I mentioned that. Uh, so these are just some of the features. Now, here around the main pool, a beautiful, serene area. Remember what I said about no kids on board. So you sit back, listen to some classic entertainment, um, listen to some uh, beautiful music, uh, no entertainers here, no animators whatsoever. Uh, you might have in the evenings at night, maybe a Beatles band or, you know, Rat Pack style music that will be offered here, dance tunes, but no show and party bands for that matter. More so, in 2022, we are starting sailing on the Great American River. And we're doing that by means with a brand new Viking ship, the gorgeous Viking Mississippi. And she is right on track to be launched on time. Here she is in uh, St. Louis, absolutely beautiful. And one thing will strike you right up front that it doesn't have a paddle wheel. It's a contemporary modern Viking vessel, absolutely gorgeous, five decks. And in design, very similar to what we have just seen on rivers and oceans prior. The first itineraries that we're offering are Heart of the Delta, a beautiful eight-day sailing from New Orleans to Memphis. Secondly, America's Heartland from St. Louis to St. Paul. Now here, we're staying in the northern states. Now this obviously takes place during the summer months, right? Eight days <laughs> in New Orleans, the Southern Charms will be one of the itineraries that we can offer during the cooler season in the winter. Uh, so these sailings go all year round. America's Great River, a fantastic 15 day journey also offered during the summer months. Um, the bad news that I have is that 2022 obviously is, <laughs> excuse me, completely sold out. Um, as far as I can tell, 23, 24 will be available. So if you're interested in sailing the Mississippi with Viking, Book it now, talk to your travel advisor, have them look up some uh, sail dates that are still available for you to book your journey on Viking Mississippi. And these ships, as I said, very contemporary, modern, in typical Viking tradition, but they do have some elements of the Southern feel, like these beautiful shutters here, right? Some outside dining. It's casual fine dining, if I would like to describe it here in the River Cafe, which extends into the Aquavit Terrace, where we offer a lot of fantastic local food, uh, such as barbecue cuisine, right? Here you have the gorgeous Aquavit Terrace with its barbecue restaurant. Uh, again, as we're sailing down the river, the cuisine kind of changes because this, you know, as we all can agree, barbecue is not just barbecue the same. They are very, very different recipes, especially as you go from one region to another. And then here, again, the best spot on the ship for me personally, I think, is the Explorer's Lounge. Now, this particular spot is in the front of Viking, Mississippi, also has two decks, 
where you can look out into the destination, into the Mississippi Delta here from the Explorers Lounge. And especially at night, this might be the best spot uh, for a little conversation at night to look at the, do some stargazing here from this gorgeous Vista Lounge into the Mississippi Delta. There's a little plunge pool that spans from one side of the ship to the very other side to kind of, you know, cool off if one would like to do so. There's a beautiful sun deck here in an extension of that you have access to the Aquavit Terrace in the River Cafe. In the very front of the ship, a gorgeous bow with uh, a nice outside lounge area, if you will. There's a, a running track that goes all, all around the ship. There will be a couple days at sea uh, or on the river. Uh, so it's good to have this exercise deck, you know, to kind of walk around or run if you wish to do so. French balcony staterooms. I have a couple of categories that I would like to show you here. Uh, these are ADA accessible, these French balconies, some new cabins, uh, such as the Terra Suite, which is a new concept to Viking, gorgeous, right? With this center console here that has TVs facing both ways, both directions, because it's kind of like a divider between the living room and the bedroom. And then of course, our beautiful Explorer Suites, they range from 650 to over 1000 square feet, gorgeous suites. And here also one of these Explorer Suites is fully ADA accessible. <clears throat> so with that being said, I would like to welcome the latest edition, uh, our beautiful new 2022 expedition fleet. There's two ships to start with Viking Octantis and Polaris. Octantis is currently on its maiden voyage in the Antarctica. I've seen some amazing images just recently sent to me from someone on board. They're absolutely stunning. Viking Polaris is a few months behind Octantis. She is being outfitted right now and will join her sister ship in polar expeditions and other amazing areas of the world. One of them being, uh, you know, of course, the South American coastline, Chilean fjords, but also will sail the Great Lakes. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. So first of all, I wanna give you a little bit or a couple of impressions of these beautiful expedition vessels that are built to sail these extreme areas of the world, these last, um, if you will, untouched spots on earth. And uh, they are built large enough to withstand all the weathers that might come your way in these areas of the world, but you know, also small enough to fit into smaller smaller areas and bays to access the amazing wildlife in these areas. So the ship itself, a viewing platform into the destination, we can't guarantee that specific wildlife will show up next to the ship, but we can guarantee that if it does, you will see it. So anywhere on the ship, you have an amazing view into the destination, even here from the beautiful spa with all its incredible features. The Finza Terrace, which is an outside sitting area, lounging area where we have heated couches. You know, these are heated from behind to keep you nice and warm while you're sitting here and enjoying the gorgeous view. The Explorers Lounge, very similar to what you've seen on Viking Rivers, uh, on Viking Ocean and Viking Mississippi two-story lounge. Now, I want to take you a little bit behind the scenes. And here in our hangar uh, is where you would board your expedition crafts, such as the ribs, the uh, zodiacs, and such, even our two submarines that we carry. And these crafts are boarded inside the ship and then will be launched once everybody is seated, will be launched into the ocean uh, by means of slip away function or via crane into the into the sea. And these are these expedition uh, vessels uh, that we use. And uh, even these two six-seater submarines are piloted by uh, a professional, by one of our officers. One, you know, these, these captains are very, very experienced. And, um, you know, the most beautiful thing is about them is that all of those are included in the price. We do not charge you extra. Now, I mentioned a unique feature uh, and that is a slip away function on uh, this beautiful ship or on these ships. And that really opens up this market for a brand new age group, I wanna say, right? So where prior to Viking Octantis and Polaris boarding off these ribs, Zodiacs and submarines had to take place next to the ship, we are boarding these inside the ship and then we'll safely launch them into the sea. And what this looks like, I'm going to show you here with this 
amazing little video here. So I hope this is visible and this runs nicely. The passengers at this point are already in the craft and they will be launched into the sea. Here is the slip away functionality of our ribs and Zodiacs. Uh, these are launched after you are buckled down into the sea and then from there gently launched into the ocean and then you start your expedition. Also, they are coming back the same way. Your, uh, the captain will approach the uh, slide. They will be hooked and pulled into the boat and uh, for safe disembarkation inside the ship after the craft has been secured. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, we're looking now down from above the mezzanine onto the slip away feature there in the hangar. And up here we have a scientific laboratory. This laboratory is a working spot for uh, scientists that travel with us and actually do sample processing. They collect samples in all the parts of the world that we travel to, process them here on board and conduct scientific research where you, if you wish to do so, can join this research and work shoulder to shoulder with our scientists on board. They do lectures on board, <coughs> excuse me, and will uh, will have desk hours that you can attend and ask your questions about their work. Uh, of course, uh, these will be communicated while you are on board then. The staterooms, absolutely stunning with windows that drop down halfway to if you, want to, if you want to elbow height, great for photography or for the use of binoculars, right? You have this beautiful sectional here that is facing the window. So these cabins have been designed from the window back inside the cabin with the view, with the, with the absolutely uh, necessity of, of having the best view uh, possible for you. Uh, these cabins were designed and again for views like this, right? When you wake up in the morning and have a view like this, it does not get better than that. So with that being said, uh, I would like to spend maybe a minute or two on the Viking health and safety protocol. I think these are questions that we have to talk about, um, especially, you know, at, the, at this time uh, of the pandemic. The Viking health and safety protocol was established to really protect passengers and crew. And hands down, it is the most comprehensive and best uh, protocol that there is out there in the industry for, for that matter. Uh, we're the only company with the PCR laboratory on board. We can test passengers daily if need be and really prevent an outbreak uh, for that matter uh, on board and take action, uh, you know, if somebody is tested positive, right? We have updated medical facilities now on board with a full fetched uh, ICU unit. Uh, you know, the standard uh, now is spaced out dining arrangements, uh, social distancing. We are limiting the capacity that we're sailing as well. Now UVC uh, ray treatment of air, uh, every cabin has its own air supply. Uh, it's not shared between cabins or public spaces. So the UVC filters really make sure that there is no um, bacteria or viral, uh, viruses slipping through in any of the cabins. So also um, UVC robots that are treating surfaces at night when we're all asleep in public spaces, public areas. And UVC, if you're not familiar, is known to kill virus and bacteria. And 99%, 99.9% of virus and bacteria are killed by UVC light. Now, uh, again, make sure to talk to your travel advisor. You might have a couple of questions about cabins, destinations, best time of the year. Talk to your travel advisor. These are professionals that have all done the Viking Academy. They passed all the trainings and they know best uh, when to go, which spot on the ship might work best for you because they know you. you uh, pretty much interviewing with them and uh, within that conversation, they will learn your preferences and will be able to point you in the right direction. And also we'll be able to point out extra discounts that are always available, referral credits, uh, other savings. Uh, they, it's, it's in a travel advisor's vast interest to get you the best deal uh, that there's out there. Many of the deals are not publicly known. Uh, little tricks and, uh, you know, past passenger discounts, those, those kind of things. Your travel advisor will know them and will point you in the right direction and help you actually, quite frankly, save quite some money. 
with your best interest in mind. So with that being said, again, uh, my name is Rainer Marks. I'm a director of business development. Thank you so much for attending today. I appreciate your time and please see your travel advisor. I really would like to see you on board for your next journey on Viking and wish you a fantastic day and safe travels.